Uh, avian influenza is not a new phenomenon. Uh, the industry and uh, wild birds have been uh, affected by it for a long time. But the outbreak which we are currently suffering is by far the worst on record. Since the beginning of October, 136 cases of HF5N1 uh, have been identified with millions of birds dying or being culled. It is affecting every part of the country, uh, but particularly it is affecting uh, East Anglia. And in my own constituency of Malden, we've already had three cases in the last few weeks. It spreads very rapidly, uh, possibly because the mutated virus um, which is currently affecting the population, has an increased ability to replicate uh, and is extending to infect a broader range of species. But it is not just in this country. It is a global issue. In America, there is a record outbreak which has led to over 49 million birds in 46 states either being uh, culled or dying since the beginning of this year. Across Europe, it has been found in 37 countries with something like 48 million birds culled. And every country across the globe is now being affected, even as far as penguins in South Africa. The epidemic on this scale is a disaster, both for wildlife and for agriculture. In terms of wildlife, the RSPB report that 65 species of wild bird have now tested positive, with tens of thousands of birds dying every day. And for quite a number of species, it is what they describe as having a population impact. So guillemot, kittiwakes, Svalbard, barnacle geese, all are dying in such numbers that it is actually putting at risk uh, those species in this country. But it is not just wild birds. It is also affecting dramatically a major industry in this country, which is the poultry industry. The poultry industry is worth £2 billion to our economy. It employs over 34,000 people, and it provides something like half the meat which is consumed in Britain. The industry has already had to cope with serious challenges. First of all, the seasonal labour shortage, uh, which has affected, which came about immediately after we left the European Union and remains a challenge, and that is something which I know the Minister is also aware of. And following that, the industry was affected, obviously, by COVID. But just as it was beginning to recover from these blows, along came avian influenza, and it now faces an existential threat. We need to have a clear plan. Firstly, the government rightly identifies biosecurity as crucial in trying to stop the spread of disease. I welcome the uh, move to now require mandatory housing uh, since the beginning uh, of November. But the spread of this disease is extremely rapid, and a single wild bird can infect thousands uh, in a very short space of time. It is right that we have established protection zones around areas where the disease has been identified. And there are more measures we can take, particularly around, for instance, um, the collection and disposal of the carcasses of wild birds, because as I say, one wild bird infected can massively affect an entire flock in a very short space of time. We also probably need to improve the um, oversight of those backyard businesses the few numbers of chickens that supply eggs maybe for our family or their neighbours, that they are equally at risk and are equally likely to spread, and they need to be more visible to the regulators. But we have to accept that whilst biosecurity is tremendously important, it is not going to stop the spread of this disease. The government has instituted a policy of culling, and in the case, and that is already leading to the death of thousands, millions of birds. In the case of the very biggest producers, if the disease is identified in a shed, it means that the entire of the flock in that shed will be culled, but at least they will have some remaining uh, birds in other sheds, and of course compensation will help if they then need to be culled uh, as a result. But for smaller producers, they can lose their entire flock overnight. 
and I have to say to the Minister that the compensation available is totally inadequate. Under the Animal Health Act 1981, compensation is payable following culling. But that act was passed at a time when it was a relatively low pathogenic strain and it didn't kill all the birds in a very short space of time. That has now changed. They die extremely rapidly. And for smaller producers, it means that they can lose almost their entire flock without being eligible for any compensation. In my constituency, I have Kelly turkeys, possibly, arguably the finest turkey producer in the country, as vouched for by Jamie Oliver and by Nigella Lawson, etc. But Kelly turkeys, just to give one example, in one flock had 10,000 birds. They identified the disease on a Thursday evening, informed APHA, who said that they would send the vets round. By the time the vets arrived on Monday morning, of the 10,000 birds, 9,800 were dead. Therefore, they were likely to get compensation for the 150 that were remaining. And that is the situation faced by poultry farmers right across the country. The answer is that compensation needs to be payable from the moment of the identification of a disease or notification. The change that has taken place is welcome, but actually is not going to make a great deal of difference. 48 hours post-confirmation is simply not enough. And we need compensation to be paid on the same basis that it is paid for four-legged species. And I understand that that requires an amendment to the law. But this is absolutely essential if we are to preserve the poultry industry in this country. In the longer term, the answer is likely to be vaccination. At the moment, there isn't an effective vaccination, but we need to work as rapidly as possible, and we saw what could be done in the face of the COVID epidemic. But we need to uh, identify an effective vaccine, and we also need now to be talking to our international partners about ensuring that trade restrictions are lifted. Because this, as I say, is a disease that is affecting every country, and the answer is likely to be the same in every country. And it's notable that the head of virology at the APHA, who previously said was not in favour necessarily of vaccines, is now saying that we have to look rapidly uh, to establish an effective vaccine. We are in the run-up to Christmas, a time when millions of families are going to want to eat turkey or goose as they do. This year already we are seeing dramatic shortages of turkeys and gooses are almost, uh, geese rather, are almost impossible to find. The situation next year is likely to be even more serious because unless the government provides some confidence to farmers, who is going to invest in a turkey flock for the production for Christmas when they could lose the entire thing due to an outbreak of disease and have no compensation payable. So George, we have just emerged from the COVID crisis. This is the equivalent of the COVID crisis for birds. Biosecurity is important to stop its spread, but is not ultimately going to be successful. Vaccination is probably the key. And in the meantime, the government needs to step in to support the businesses that are affected. Those are what happened. Those things happened under COVID. They now need to happen again if we are to have a viable poultry industry in this country.